You can enjoy free TV with this homemade antenna, which receives high-quality digital TV signals. We live about 50 miles from the nearest big city, and we get 19 channels. You can use either copper electrical wiring or metal coat hangers. I will show directions for both. To get started, you'll need a piece of 1x3 furring strip, which is actually a piece of wood that's 3 quarters of an inch thick by 2 and a half inches wide. You will need two 25 inch lengths. For the base, I used a 10 inch long piece of 2x6. Before assembling your antenna, you can pretty it up a bit by sanding the rough edges and the corners. And by applying a coat of stain, or polyurethane, or paint. You'll need two 2 inch drywall screws, a couple of shorter screws, 14 number 8 by 3 quarter inch sheet metal screws, and 14 number 10 flat washers. Once your paint or stain or urethane is dried, line up the two 25 inch long pieces of furring strip. Make sure they are evenly aligned. Next we're going to screw the boards together. Measure three inches down from each end and then one and a quarter inches in from the sides. This will be about the center. Drill a pilot hole for the screw. I used a sixteenth of an inch bit. Then put one of the shorter screws in each hole. Now I'll turn it around and do the other end. Choose a bottom side on your base and then measure halfway in. I'm measuring 5 inches since my base is 10 inches long. Line up your ruler or your tape measure with your halfway mark and make a mark 2 and 3 eighths of an inch from each side. Two screws will attach through the base to your furring strip assembly, so make sure the furring strip assembly lines up with the holes. Drill two pilot holes using a 16th inch bit. On the top side of the base, eyeball where the joined furring strips will attach through these two screw holes. Then trace around the joined furring strips to mark the position. Flip the base over. Put your two two inch long screws through the pilot holes so that they protrude slightly on the other side. Place one end of the joined furring strips into the tips of the screws so that they make two marks. Now drill pilot holes where these two marks are. Back up the screws in the base just a little bit. The screws will go into your joined furring strips by coming up through the base. 
Line up your furring strips with the outline you made on the top of your base. You can prop up the other end with some wood blocks. Now screw the base to the furring strips. You should have something that looks like this. This step can either be done before or after the furring strips are joined together. On one of the furring strips we will make a mark a half an inch from the edge of one of the long sides. Line up a tape measure or a ruler along your half inch marks and then make a mark at two inches, seven and a quarter inches, ten inches, twelve and a half inches, and seventeen and three quarter inches. And we'll come a half inch in from the other long side and do the same, making marks at two inches, seven and a quarter inches, ten inches, twelve and a half inches, and seventeen and three quarter inches. Drill a pilot hole at each mark with a sixteenth of an inch bit. Since I have my base attached, I'm using a couple of wood blocks to keep it level. Screw a sheet metal screw and washer about halfway into each pilot hole. It should look like this when you're done. Now we need some bare copper wire. I'm pulling some number 12 ground wire out of an old piece of Romex cable. We will need 8 pieces 14 inches long. So mark the wires at 14 inches and then cut. We'll need to bend the wires at the 7 inch mark, so mark each wire at 7 inches. That's the halfway point. I made myself a jig out of a block of wood and a screw so I could easily bend the wires. You can tighten the bend with a pair of needle nose pliers. The gap should be two and three quarters to three inches wide. And here's how the eight pieces should look. Instead of copper wire, you can use metal coat hangers. You can make your V-shaped pieces from the corners. Tighten the corner with a pair of pliers. Just measure seven inches each way and cut. It can be a little tough. For this next step, I'll use two pieces of insulated wire. Configure your two insulated wires along your screws in this manner, with the wire always on the outside of each screw. Then do the same for the other side. Trim off the excess wire, leaving enough to wrap around the screws at each end. Whoa, that one went flying. Place your insulated wires back in position. 
Where the wires cross, we will make some marks. We want to leave the insulation on this section of the wires. Strip the insulation from the center section and from the ends of each wire. You can use a knife carefully, as I am using here, always remembering to point the blade away from you, or you can use some wire strippers. The ends come off easily by using a pair of wire strippers. Here's how it looks with one of the wires on. You'll notice that the bare sections of wire make contact with each of the screws. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, make a loop at the end of one of your wires and wrap it around the screw. Make sure to place it beneath the washer. Follow along the length of the wire, making sure the bare sections are up against the screws. Loop the wire around the screw on the other end, and then do the same for the other wire. The bare wire should contact each of the screws, but should not make contact here or here. If you're using bare wire or coat hanger wire, you can wrap electrical tape around the sections where the wires cross. This will keep the bare sections of wire from making contact with each other. Make sure all the bare wire is tucked neatly beneath the washers. Now we'll slide our V-shaped wires beneath the other wires and the washers and tighten them. The V-shaped wire should attach like this. Be sure not to attach any V-shaped wires to the two middle screws. And here's what it should look like. No V-shaped wires are attached to the middle screws. Flip your antenna assembly over. We're going to use a couple of disposable grill toppers and mark them at the halfway point in the middle. Uh, this one on the package actually measures 16 inches by 12 inches. So we'll line up our disposable grill topper on the back of the antenna, I'm making sure that it's centered nicely, the screw is in the center, and we can see our marks in the middle as well. And we'll drill a couple of pilot holes at a space in the screen, and one down here. and we'll attach using a couple of sheet metal screws and washers. And we'll attach the other disposable grill topper at the bottom of our antenna in the same manner.
Now we'll flip our antenna back over on the other side. For this next step, you'll need a 75 to 300 ohm ballon or matching transformer. These can be purchased at electronic stores. They can also be purchased online for under a dollar, plus shipping, of course. On the two middle screws where there are no V-shaped wires attached, we will attach our ballon. I like to attach mine beneath the wire and the washer in a sort of horizontal fashion for a secure fit. I find that an FM dipole antenna helps bring in PBS stations. Next I'll attach the FM dipole antenna at the bottom of the antenna. I like to attach this between the screw and the washer. When you're done, adjust the V-shaped wires so that all of the ends are equal distances apart. Here's the finished product. So here's our antenna hooked up to the TV. We're receiving 19 channels. Normally I have the FM dipole antenna unwound and extended, but it seems to be working just fine where it is today. Getting your antenna to work isn't quite as easy as just hooking it up. In another video I show you how to connect your antenna and how to configure your TV to receive antenna signals.